Um, you would not want to hear me sing. But, you know, our next, um, our next uh, guest, uh, speaker, Mark Irwin, are you here before I... Oh, he's in the, well, he's hiding. A, he missed our, I'm sorry he missed our dinner last night. I wasn't able to get these tidbits um, other than he may or may not be related to Steve Irwin, our, the late Steve Irwin. I, I'm not sure if uh, Mark uh, croc wrestles crocodiles or stingrays, but I want to bring him up to talk about the, um, I believe it's North America, the largest energy storage project in North America. Someone mentioned the world. So I'll leave that up to him to uh, give that information. But this is exciting. Energy storage is crucial for renewable, you know, for the renewable industry. How do we store the, um, uh, the wind and, and solar um, uh, energy? Is there anything else I need to say, Mark? Okay, come on up. Uh, he'll make the long walk to stage. Um, and you can tell an amusing anecdote about yourself. I should have talked to Laurel Shockley about that, but thank you. Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't remember any amusing anecdotes, so I'll, I'll skip that today. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that, and uh, it was really exciting to be up here. Um, in my career, um, I started with one of the Edison uh, companies, unregulated company, in 1987. I've had a chance to be involved in uh, cogen plants at the Kern River Oil Field, cogen plants at the Midway Field, um, some of those, uh, the Alta wind contract and the big uh, solar contracts were things that I did when I was the utility. From a contracting standpoint, we were the counterparty and my team was involved in those. Um, so it's really great to kind of see that some of the big things in, in Kern County, I've had a chance to at least touch and be, have an, have an opportunity to learn. So I always, I always love coming up to Bakersfield, even though you know, it was a holiday for us yesterday, and so I didn't get the time to get up in time for dinner, so I do apologize for that. But I was reducing the emissions by not traveling during traffic hours, so that, that's, my, that's my story at least. So I'm here to talk about energy storage. Um, what I do in Southern California Edison is I work for a group uh, we have called Advanced Technology. Advanced Technology is part of our transmission and distribution business unit, so we're looking at future technologies for the grid. Um, I have two groups of, of our research um, organizations and under my supervision, which is energy storage and electric transportation. But we're looking at these assets as a utility asset. So that's, that's my focus. Um, we have another group in the company that is out buying storage services. My team has provided some technical support. We're really trying to figure out how to put these in the grid to make the grid work better. So um, some, some quick pieces I'll, I'll skip through pretty quick. Um, you know, our service territory doesn't include Bakersfield, but it includes actually quite a bit of the San Joaquin Valley and uh, obviously includes part of Kern County with um, Tehachapi. So why are, we, why are we working on energy storage? A lot of the policies you've heard touched on today with high renewable energy in, in the basin, we also have um, all of the coastal power plants going away with the once through cooling regulation changing. So we've got a big change in our generation mix. It's going to distributed generation and it's going to be intermittent. So it's, although it's very green and very clean, it's less predictable and less constant. So to do that, that means the grid's gotta be more flexible, right? So we're thinking about, we're, we're driven by state policy. We're an arm, you know, when the state policy goes a certain direction, the utility is really, our job is to, to, to respond to that, okay? So these are a number of the policies that you'll see as well as zero energy homes um, out in 2020. So this is what we do in, in advanced technology. We look at these kind of phases, investigation, then we go to a, a modeling or lab evaluation, then we go to demonstration, we go to deployment, we go to pilot. To Hatchby's a demonstration, it's kind of in the middle of this. I'm gonna talk a bit about our process and then I'm gonna talk about to Hatchby more specifically. That's a really interesting picture there of one of our labs where we actually um, we do computer simulation testing with an actual piece of equipment. So we simulate a grid and then add that piece of equipment where it is in the grid and it actually operates when it's supposed to operate. Really, uh, really interesting technology. Okay, so how do we put these steps into energy storage? We do electrochemical um, storage evaluation. So we do lab testing of technologies early on. See how that technology responds. See how, how what its life looks like, how it degrades over time, whether it's able to do the duty that we're looking for. And the duty we're looking for varies um, and, and what's it best fit. 
we do system evaluation. We then take a system and we actually test a complete system where before we tested a really small building block. So you think about batteries, think about solar the same way, building blocks. So it's, solar builds up from modules to strings to big systems. Um, batteries build from a cell to a module to a system usually. So or some with the auto is a cell to a pack, okay? So we then, after we've looked at, um, at, a, at a cell level or at a small system level, we look at a complete system. We test to see how it operates, test to make sure it operates reliably. One of the things about the electrical grid, and, and I think you guys will appreciate this, is we don't put something out in the grid unless we know it's reliable because the, the need in the grid is not for something that sometimes works. It's for something that always works, right? Um, and then we field evaluation. Then we actually, after we've tested things in the lab and we've looked at them and we've seen that they work, then we put them out actually on the grid and do an evaluation. That's where I'm gonna focus most of my time today. Um, then in, in the evaluation space, we have demonstration. We then go to pilot and we then go to deployment of mainstream devices. And the, the job of my group when we go to mainstream devices is to push those out to the rest of the company. Is that we don't keep them in a long-term deployment. We make them part of our system generally. So this is a list of our demonstration activities. Um, you can see that the Hatchby project is by far the largest, but we've got, we've got demonstration projects across the different span of where the utility has devices, clear from the home to right, the home behind the meter to just um, at the last distribution transformer that maybe serves eight to 10 homes to unloading a distribution system circuit to the Tehachapi project, which is a much larger demonstration project and, and has many capabilities. Let's see, that's what we've been doing. What we have in front of us is, is a, a pilot project that we're in the process of deploying right now. Um, we have a controls project that's a storage project, but if you think about it, one thing is, is if you have one storage device, it's, it's not too hard to control. And you think about it like a generator and people think about it, well, there's a man there. Well, there's not a man there, okay? And so if we're gonna, if we're gonna deploy a lot of storage, which, which is where we're headed, they have to be able to work together and communicate on a system and work on an automated fashion. So we have a big controls project that we're working on. And then we have a second pilot project. They just kind of move our piloting along. So those are, those are things that are coming. Okay, so I've got a, a nice little video clip that we put together for our opening at Tehachapi that we're gonna play and then I'm gonna talk a bit about that. SE is working on battery energy storage systems because we view it as part of the next generation grid. The Tehachapi Storage Project is an eight megawatt, 32 megawatt hour battery energy storage system. 50% funded by the Department of Energy and 50% by SCE. Energy storage at Tehachapi can be used to relieve congestion when needed for grid reliability functions. Tehachapi Energy Storage System is one of the largest battery energy storage systems in the world. It's an important project because it allows us to look at grid scale energy storage. We always test our projects in our lab in Pomona before putting them out in the field. But this system was too big to test. That's what led to our decision to create a mini system. The purpose is to verify the integration of the various hardware and software components on a miniaturized level in the laboratory. The mini system allowed us to uh, test mode of operation that uh, cannot uh, safely be uh, reproduced uh, in the field, so, such as, uh, for example, grid outage. The critical element of the mini system is to validate all safety requirements prior to deployment. It has allowed us to work out many software bugs and operational algorithms in the lab is actually composed of a two battery rack, where the full system includes 604 battery rack. Each rack contains 18 individual battery modules. Each battery module contains 56 of these prismatic battery cells. In addition to the battery rack, I include all individual components present in the large system. The mini system drastically reduced the commissioning time of the system. After commissioning, mini system will be used to validate any changes in control uh, strategy as well as troubleshoot problems. Many elements of the system will be utilized in the future deployment of energy storage devices. Energy storage will be a key element in helping integrate distributed resources into the next generation grid. 
With the work we're doing here and other research efforts, SCE's next generation grid is becoming a more resilient, reliable, and flexible system. Okay, so that, that's a nice little kind of summary. Um, one of the things uh, I'll, I'll get to, the, the focus on the mini system is how do you test a big system before you get out in the field? So you saw some close-ups, you saw some pullbacks. This is the, the building you can see the picture of. Uh, it's a 6,300 square foot building, so this is not a, uh, a small little operation. Um, you can see some uh, pictures of it empty before it was being filled. Um, this is the building blocks. This is what I talked about that storage is a lot like PV, building blocks. So you heard um, one of the people on the team talking about 56 cells to a module, uh, 18 modules to a rack, and in the case of the Tehachapi system, 604 racks to the system. And we tested two racks, created a small system with all of the communication software and everything to be able to test it in our lab ahead of time before we put it out in the field. Um, that, this is a picture, it looks a little different than the picture uh, you saw there. These all have covers in the front. Um, we didn't have the covers on yet. We were still in the installation process. So you can see this is one row of four rows of uh, racks of batteries. So this, this really just look, looks a lot like a server farm, if, you, if anybody's ever been in a server farm, right? These look like they're IT racks that you're sliding a module in just like you'd slide in a, a, a server or something in an, in an IT rack. Uh, that's the mini system. So we spent about uh, four months testing on the mini system before we um, completed our testing as, uh, as Grant in the uh, video mentioned. We found a number of software challenges. One of the things about energy storage is people say, well, batteries have worked forever. Batteries may have worked. Batteries work well in the lab. In people's labs, they've tested them for a long time. We don't need batteries, we need systems, right? And so we have to test these systems work. Um, we've, and I talked about we've deployed across lots of different levels. Systems have not consistently worked out of the box first time because these are new to everybody. They haven't been doing these for 10 or 15 years. They've been doing them for two or three years and a lot of vendors have deployed one or two and in a very controlled process and still the system side has been kind of one off. Um, this is the second piece of the mini system. Um, th the other thing I, I mentioned before, our real-time digital simulator. So what we were able to do here at this project was we were taking the controller, which is what controls the whole system, and we were able to plug it into our real-time digital simulator, and we told the controller it's an 8 megawatt, 32 megawatt hour device located here. And so we were able to actually run our a model of our utility system and look at it and say, okay, when these events occur, have this system charged. When these event, other events occur, have it discharged, and see how it worked on an automated fashion. So we were able to test the controller again in advance uh, on our system. Um, this is uh, the, the other big piece that's kind of accelerating where we were going. We started our journey in energy storage because of all state policies. They've been accelerated because of the mandate that we had uh, come out of the commission about a year ago to, for Edison to build or purchase 580 megawatts over about a 10 year period of time. Um, we can have the utility proposed to build up to half. The mandate itself doesn't have the funding process in place, but it has a process for us to ask. Um, where we are focused is on the distribution system for utility operation. We're focused on integrating this into a distribution system and deferring distribution assets while also being able to use it for market opportunities when the distribution system doesn't need it. But the primary focus is integrating into our distribution system. Um, we see the market assets and the behind the meter assets being done by third parties and we will end up contracting for those. We announced, I think it was last week, um, the first set of contracts uh, that we've signed for what we call the local capacity um, process where we needed capacity in the basin, actually in mostly Orange County part of the basin. Um, it was for all resources, but we ended up signing about 250 megawatts of energy storage contracts out of that, which I think people around the world are really saying, wow, there really is a market for energy storage. And so we're seeing a lot of these, you know, you heard the comment about Moore's Law earlier, a lot of the same kind of electronic technology, a lot of the same kind of improvements coming down a fast scale to help, uh, help make things uh, more cost effective going forward. So the last things I wanted to, wanted to leave with you is I've heard a lot about renewable today and I heard a lot about transformational and the, the, uh, the unmanned um, uh, crap being able to go around. Um, everybody's talking about what the future is. 
the renewable future doesn't really happen without a way to balance the system effectively. And you can balance the system effectively by making that renewable shut off when there's not the load for it, when, uh, when there's still a, a good resource, or you can try to balance it with a storage device. We think that will be a lot of the kind of things the grid will do. It won't be just about renewable though. You have to think about it, it's about matching load with generation. And the other things are our state's got a big drive. We had an earlier comment about energy efficiency in our state. We also are driving demand response programs. So we have to man manage load, which is what customers want and what they're willing to have shut off also with generation, whether that's a generation unit that we can control like a gas unit or a generation that we don't, unit that we don't control the source as much like a wind or a solar unit. And so I think that's the way to think about energy storage when people say, no, it's just for renewables. No, it's to, it's to balance load and generation. The renewable part of the generation makes it a little trickier balance, but it's not the only piece of it. So that's, that's kind of uh, my message here for today. And um, you know, I'm, I'm really glad to have the opportunity to come up to Kern County. Uh, I, I love coming to Bakersfield and I love hearing about all the innovation up here and all the new energy projects that um, I've kind of, I've seen around during my career and it's, it's, a, it's a great chance. So thank you for your time. Thanks, Mark. You can almost picture the Energizer bunny going down that hallway, right? I'm not sure what, L, what LG Chem uses, but this, I mean, this is in our backyard. Think about these inc incredible advances, that paradigm shift that's occurring right before our eyes.